This is where I share my secret feelings about your mom. Yes, hi, this message is for Yuri. This is Dr. Mark's office calling to confirm your appointment for tomorrow. It is, uh, if you could arrive at 1.30 to fill out the paperwork, that'd be great. Also, if you could bring a list of any past or present medications, that would be helpful as well. So we'll see you tomorrow at 1.30, and that's in the Vernon Hills office. This episode is brought to you by DrawYourPicture.com, where you can get just about anything drawn for pretty darn cheap. Check it out, see what I've drawn for others, and see what I can do for you at DrawYourPicture.com. Also brought to you by Bluehost Hosting, unlimited space, unlimited hosting, unlimited bandwidth. Check it out today at nlcast.com slash bluehost. I got a bad feeling about this. No. Nobody's Listening, where we tell funny life stories and invite you to do the same. Hey, people, this is Nobody's Listening, the show where we tell funny life You heard what she said. It's episode 173, brought to you the week of July 11, 2011. Um, today is free Slurpee Day, by the way, if you missed out. <laughs> 7-Eleven, get it? Yeah, but it's true. I'm your host. My name is James. And with me is John. Sometimes I wish I could tell nicely how sometimes i wish i could nicely tell people how stupid they are steinklauber how you doing john welcome back to the show well that's me in a nutshell thank you very much it's an honor and privilege to be here as always i don't i don't really aspire to tell people how stupid they are i just want to get up the guts to tell my neighbor that their wind chimes are making me want to kill them <laughs> just just break them i i hate wind chimes i used to love them as a child but now i don't know it just it feels like I need to go to church every time I hear them, and I'm just like, no, I don't want to. It makes me feel like I need to go to the bathroom. It makes me feel like butterflies are getting a little bit too cocky in my garden. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. It just seems like something, you know, like tree huggers and stuff, and nothing against them. But if I was a tree and people were hugging me, and, like, they hadn't done that for thousands of years, I'd start getting cocky, and I'd start growing funny. And I would start moving okay. away. But anyway, uh, we also have somebody else in the uh, in the room with us. He is because uh, today is a celebrity interview. And Mark, you may not have known this, but you are a celebrity because we only interview celebrities. So if you weren't before, Mar yes. Mark Malkoff, welcome to Nobody's Listening, celebrity Mark Malkoff, ladies and gentlemen. Give him a hand. Gosh, thank you so much. <laughs> you use the word celebrity very loosely, and I like that. That it's it's important that somebody start doing it because I don't know. You, they say you get what you put out there, you know, karma wise, yeah. and you reap what you sow. So we figure if we call enough people celebrities, by God, somebody's going to start doing <laughs> the same to us. So, well, the, isn't like celebrity that. somebody that's not married yet? That's cel celibacy. Oh man, yeah. I totally got that messed up. Which uh, okay, I can be a celebrity one day then. <laughs> John's still saving himself after two kids for his real wife. So yeah, <laughs> stop. How he does that? But anyway, uh, Mark Wood. Uh, in, in a nutshell, tell the people who you are and what you do on the interwebs, and then we'll play our opening song. If you don't mind, put you on the spot. Sure. Uh I'm a comedian, filmmaker, amateur stuntman. Um, I do these strange videos online. Um, a couple of them that I did that people might know is I lived and slept in Ikea for a week mm -hmm. um, in New Jersey a couple of years back. They, yeah, they let me do it, which was shocking. Um, and then I, what else did I do? I did a, a, the 171 Starbucks video where I went to every single store, every Starbucks in Manhattan yeah. in less than 24 hours and made a purchase, consumed something, almost died. <laughs> oh dude you, you lived on a plane for a while that that's when i found you oh it, yeah i lived on a plane i set a guinness world record um for most oh, flights. Yeah. i lived on a plane to get over my fear of flying and my uh my wife had to fly with me on the weekends to see me which was a very very um uh, yeah we have a strange relationship we can talk about that more in a little bit good 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 and you, yes. you you raced a city bus on a tricycle and um you had people carry you across manhattan if i'm not mistaken is that is that correct yes and no one dropped me thank goodness even though a bunch of the columbia students were drunk out of their mind wow <laughs> oh and my favorite one had to be the keys to the city stunt slash oh, film thanks. yeah because yeah, yeah. I, me and John's. I wonder if it's, you know, Go ahead. 
Oh, I wanted to see how many U.S. mayors I could get to present me the, their key to the city just by asking. And within 30 days, I had 95 mayors That's present me their key to the crazy. city. Yeah, my favorite was John and I, we share the same hometown of St. Mary's, Georgia. And yep. y- you totally dissed our, <laughs> our mayor. <laughs> <laughs> you just walk up, that. took it, said thanks, and left. And he's like, huh? Huh? high five. <laughs> okay. Here's the key. Bye. <laughs> oh, man. That was so, a good one. Well, we're going to get more into who Mark Malkoff is and, and, and helping you guys, all three or 4,000 of you, to love him as much as we do. So, But first, um, I want you to fall in love with this young lady. She is a single lady overcome by her love of cats. Her name is Debbie, the online dater, and uh, the guys from Schmo Yoho. AKA the uh, Gregory Brothers have done it again with another song mashup of uh, of a great viral video with two million two hundred three thousand two hundred thirty four views. This Good is uh, can't hug every cat. <laughs> I like she was so song. cute till she started talking. You talking. Know? <laughs> 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 And the tears. I know how she feels. <laughs> yes, you can. Sort of. <laughs> Depends on what kind of cat you love. Because running could come automatically if you loved really large jungle cats. <laughs> <laughs> I just love how she combined those two loves. This lady's never getting married. <laughs> She's a cat lady in the making. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with cat lady. Yeah, there is. They love cats. Get them love cats and normal. I have a theory that if people love cats, it's because they secretly hate themselves. Because <laughs> cats don't like you. <laughs> Sorry, it's the truth. Oh man, cats! Cats are like honey badgers. They don't care. They don't care if you <laughs> hug them. <laughs> Sorry. Apparently, you've seen the honey badger video. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay. I good. Don't care. Uh, it's a great I'll song, though. Song. I'll give her that. You can. Uh, I love the Gregory Brothers. Oh man. So yeah, there it is. Songify this. Can't hug every cat. Do you remember in uh, not Back to the Future, but Home Alone Two? You remember that great film? Um, yeah. Cor- Corey Haim or somebody like him. Was stuck in uh, New York City, and and the the one <laughs> good yeah somebody, uh, Corey Feldman, one of those two. I can't tell them apart. They, <laughs> Wrong decade. <laughs> they were stuck in New York City, and there was this yeah there was this there was this lady <laughs> in the in Central Park, and she was covered literally in pigeons, and yeah. um, that's what I imagined. I mean, I mean, literally, this lady as an actress had pigeons affixed to her body. In order to make yeah. this happen, because they were flapping like mad the whole time. That's what I imagine this lady's going to be like, except with cats. She's literally going to staple gun them to her, to her blouse. <laughs> On a rainbow in a basket. Oh, gosh. So scary. I have, can, I, can I pop your reality bubble a little bit? Mm-hmm. I think that was actually a, a little bit of a, a hoax. Oh, well, most people think it was. I, I don't care either way. Um, <laughs> you know, I'm good with it being real. Just like Blair Witch Project... And Pete's <laughs> dragon. They're all in real. paranormal activity. Yes. No. Okay. Or anyway. the man going to the moon. That's right. My God, I watched that is Mythbusters. The best one. Mythbusters <laughs> proved it. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. They proved it. <laughs> He's one of those types. Oh. Conspiracy. That's his next movie <laughs> video project. Can a man really go to the moon? I, I work Malcolm. Joking. I want to go on record. <laughs> okay, he's, I knew I liked this guy. He's, uh, he's got a, he's got a sense of humor. It's time for weekly updates. We 
I'm so proud and militaristic. Um, okay, <laughs> mine, mine first. Speak. In case you don't know and you're new to the show, uh, weekly updates are something funny that's happened the last seven days or so. Um, I, you, my, my children are often the butt of a lot of my jokes, and they've, they've <laughs> become pretty – resistant or resilient to them like you go to other kids and they're like what's for dinner and you'll say something like you know monkey brains or something they'll freak out right because they're like oh my god you lied to me and you're an adult my kids they don't they don't believe anything i say (laughs) at all but it also means that they are not afraid to just say whatever the flip that comes to their mind and so my three and a half year old son who many of you know is is still learning to talk because of a hearing disorder that he had uh, mostly because he wouldn't take his fingers out of his ears until he was two. Um, but uh, anyway, we were talking about my, my 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 wife's birthday, which was yesterday. She turned 35, I mean, 25 years old. And, <laughs> and she, uh, anyway, we were really busy that day, so we're actually celebrating tomorrow. But when I mentioned it was her birthday, my son, who loves birthdays of any kind, um, especially his, chimed in, it's my birthday too. And and I says no, it's not. And he goes, and he's playing around now with with different measurements. Like my my daughter's thing used to be, um, I did that last year, and that's that meant yesterday. And we had to. Well, anyway, he doesn't have a clue what he's talking about, so he just goes, "It's in ten seconds. My birthday's in ten seconds." And about the time we got through <laughs> laughing at that, he goes, "Okay, it's in two pounds." So oh, nice. my genius little boy, who I have great hopes of uh, having a job with a name on his shirt. Um, he, he, he thinks that, uh, two pounds is a, is a unit of time measurement. And, uh, it was just so random. It kind of turned my head. It's like I was talking to it a schizophrenic. My family. So <laughs> yeah, when you're dieting, two pounds ago, <laughs> when you're dieting, two pounds means one week. Yeah, you're right. But, but anyway, so, um, I'm still waiting to find out how two pounds works out in, in time units. So John, do you, what do you have? Cause that's the best I could come up with. Okay, I, I I got you beat, uh, as you like to say. Uh-huh. Um, I have a I have a son also, and um, dang it, he's, he's yeah he, he's a little bit outgoing, and um, he had band camp or not band camp but like music camp at the church, right? <laughs> so uh, he was there every day, and afterwards, you know, there's about a hundred, hundred and fifty kids I think enrolled in this whole thing. And afterwards, you know, when the parents are coming to pick them up, they have like this free time and they have somebody on the stage entertainment. So my son says, hey, I want to do something on the stage. Oh, boy. And so they're like, oh, really? All right. Well, go ahead and get on up there. And they said, uh, what do you want to do? And he says, I want to dance. Oh, and, and they said, OK. He says, I need some music. Uh, so they playing some music. And, and then he starts doing this dance. I need a pole. Yeah. <laughs> what? No. I don't understand. No, what do you mean by that? Yeah, whatever. Go. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> you ruined my story, man. No, so anyways, he starts doing this dance. Really? I don't dance, and, and neither does his mom that I know of. And and it was quite a dance. Apparently, there was some, some hip thrusts involved. Oh, boy. And uh, a little bit of little disco moves, which... <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I should stop letting him watch Saturday Night Live, but um, Saturday Night Fever. Saturday Night Fever. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's the one. It's good either way. Anyway, I'm always messing with his hair, and uh, he doesn't like me for it. That, that was a throwback to the movie, by the way. So. Oh, okay. But anyways, he danced for everybody. It was awesome. <laughs> he got applauses, and now he feels like he needs to do it every chance he can. Every chance. So yesterday in church, he was dancing, and we're awesome. not really that kind of church. So I don't know what we're gonna do. About it. <laughs> And, you know, just get him some ballet shoes and, you know, just like <laughs> some, some tights. And uh, he does like to wear dresses. So <laughs> yeah. Well, my son's two favorite colors are uh, purple and pink right now. So I've got high hopes, too. You know, congratulations. Got, you know, keep trying to make him play with cars. He doesn't care. All right, uh, Mark, I, I don't want to put you on the spot, bro. But uh, do you have I, I mean, your life must be just full of hilaria, hilarity. Being a comic and a and a creative person, be funny now. Be funny immediately. Quick. Are you? <laughs> um, I, I, I gotta go, guys. <laughs> it, was nice, it was nice being the shortest guest in the history of your show. <laughs> and, uh, it was so funny. I was hanging out. I was hanging out with my friend Tony Deo, who's a stand-up comic, and we were talking about that when people find out that you do comedy, and yeah. they're like, 
tell us a joke or, or be funny. What you're not being funny, and it's 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 so it, it it never amazes me. Like I met somebody who is Bill Cosby's limo driver, and they they were just like, you know, I was so disappointed. He he wasn't funny, and I'm like, what is he supposed to be doing? Like in the back, is your driving? Is he supposed to do an act for you? Yeah. Yeah, you're you, you're supposed to be on all the time, so this is just you. So, oh man, but it's, it's it's only comedians though that you never expect. If you meet Bono, you don't expect him to start singing, singing "Desire" <laughs> in the name. Of the- yeah, and and I'm a I'm a pastor. Nobody's all like, be spiritual now. Call down fire from heaven now. Come on, do it. Do a sermon. Take an offering now. Nobody ever asked that. But, Proverbs yeah. 16. Come on, do it. I want to. I want to hear it. <laughs> What's it say? Quote Genesis. Hurry. Yeah. Oh man. Oh well. Man, John, that was kind of a letdown, wasn't it? He wasn't funny at all. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so. Maybe he's a method comedian. Oh, that's true. Maybe he's, he's just one of those uh, those improv guys <laughs> that that meet up on the weekends. You know, everybody starts somewhere. But uh, yeah, uh, uh, by the way, chat room, thank you for joining us. We got a few folks in there tonight Captain Narthex, Mishy, somebody. Um, I, I'm always afraid to read the numbers at the end because I'm afraid one of them is going to be 69 one week and I'm not going to notice. And I don't ever want to oh, say geez. that on the show. Dr. Quest, Eric Fisher, Jared, Stink Lobster, Mishy's got two logins going on. Good job, split personality. Mr. Crutch and Owl somebody and Peeler. Uh oh. And uh, Chewy and uh, somebody's boy got lost in my mind and a whole bunch of anonymous folks. Thank you for joining us. And you can join us every Monday night at 9.30 p.m. Eastern Time, 6.30 p.m. Pacific. And if you're in the Midwest, you don't matter. Okay? <laughs> Meet so. us in the middle. Oh, man. Yeah. He just, like, uh, uh, you know, alienated two listeners. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, wait, no. They're <laughs> no, the there's quite person. a few because I used to live out there, you know, so it's like <laughs> there's people hanging on. Like, this is the last time I ever listened to him, by God. All right, uh, news next week. Um, there's not going to be any show because I got kids camp, okay? So, you know, those of you who pray, pray for my soul because kids camp is one of those things I hate to love and love to hate. It's like the Peace Corps, the toughest job you'll ever love. <laughs> So, you know, taking care of other people's kids for a week is is always amazing. Uh, I also want to encourage you to join the community because 90% of everything you give to nobody's listening goes straight to children's charity, helping kids all over the world, and especially in Africa and folks that don't have water. It's a big deal. Uh, You can join for any amount, uh, join the community by donating any amount as low as a dollar. Or you could do a $4 a month or a $10 a month uh, contribution. You'll be getting extra content invites to special things and giveaways and all kinds of stuff as we develop it. So jump on in there, help us out. Go to nlcast.com slash kids for more information. Also, you can support us by getting our iPhone or Android app for weekly bonus content and a picture of John's butt finger. It's in there somewhere in the archives. (laughs) <laughs> it's a long story. I have to see it every day. It's awesome. It's awesome. Um, so anyway, that is it. It is time for uh, our main segment. Wait, what's that? I don't know. It's just a warning. It's a Malkoff warning. Uh, celebrity interview, Mark <laughs> Malkoff. Uh, first question, sir. People, yes. tell people a little bit about yourself and what you do. Because you said you were going to tell us more. So now is your opportunity sure. to just spill your guts. Give some... Give us some hot tips on Mark Malkoff. I like to pick things that I'm kind of obsessed with, things that on paper seem almost impossible to pull off, and then I like to set out and, and do them. And, uh, yeah, it, it's just kind of uh, crazy stuff. Like, I lived on the airplane for a, uh, a whole month, and it makes wow. being married very complicated at times. Mm-hmm. Um you know, I, I'm going to tell the wife, like, um, yeah, I'm going to go race in New York City bus while riding a big <laughs> wheel. So, um, yeah, I do. I just do these weird videos, and sometimes I go on TV. Um, sometimes with Christine, I go on TV with her. And, again, she's like, compared to me, she's Andre the Giant. So oh. it's, it's kind, of, it's kind of compared to me. But we don't really think about it, until, except if we're like uh, walking down the street and we see a reflection in a store window, and we both say, "Oh my gosh!" together all at once. Kind of like, does it get let's, old? Let's look in the those people look like window. us. Does it get old when you're walking yeah. down the street and people are like, "Christine, hey, how are you doing? It's good to see." Oh, hi, Mark. 
Yeah, because that, that that happens. They a didn't lot. see you there, you know. Anyway, pretty much. I need to. I need still. Well, I have the opposite problem. I have a little short wife, and whenever I try to talk to her at the store, I always end up hitting on some twelve-year-old kid. So <laughs> I don't dare like talk Not to really. anyone until I go around and look at their face and realize that they are my spouse. So but, wow. So um, so tell me about the big wheel real quick. Um, was it a standard oh, sure. big wheel? It, it it was. I, I just I, I hate New York City transportation. The public transportation is horrible. Uh-huh. I wanted to prove a point that a child's uh, toy could beat the New York City bus. <laughs> and um, it was a one mile race on Forty Second Street, and I ended up winning by two minutes. Wow! Now, did you set it up with yeah. the bus company, or did you just randomly just do it? And the driver was no. I just random. Yeah, I made him cry. I randomly did it, and um, <laughs> but you know, I have to be. Honest, I think most meth- methods of transportation would be the New York City bus. Like mm-hmm. I would think, running, crawling, pogo stick, um, <laughs> crawling babies. Any of those? Yeah, I was just glad I didn't die. I was like in the middle of traffic, you know, riding mm-hmm. this big wheel. And and New Yorkers, I mean, I've never been there. My wife has. She's from Pennsylvania, but uh, they they didn't give it a second look, did they? This 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 uh, smallish man riding a, a big wheel next to a bus. No, any, anything goes in New York City. Like you see weird stuff. Like Get on the away, subway, man. I've been seeing a lot of people clipping their 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 uh, their fingernails. Um, there was somebody last week mm. I saw on Dredge Report on a New York City subway showering. They had made a makeshift shower. Oh my goodness! And uh, no one says anything. It's it's on very strange. Way. Wow! Apparently, so that needs so. to be your next video. Um, I maybe maybe it will. Well, not be. that we want to see you showering, but yeah. <laughs> What can Mark Malkoff get away with? (laughs) Oh, that's funny you say that, because that's kind of like, I can't talk about it, but that is actually part of the title of my new video that's Uh coming out. Have you been been hacking me like Rupert Murdoch? Stalkers! (laughs) (laughs) It's going to be on your wiki. We just do our homework. Which I discovered you had one today. He has a wiki? Yeah, Mark Malkoff has his own wiki. Did you know that? Did you write this yourself? Mr. Malcolm? No, I did not. That'd and be... my birthday and my year is wrong on that, and I, I've never changed it. Somebody did it. I don't know who did the Wikipedia. Yeah, if you make your own Wikipedia, that's pretty sad. I did. So I had to make my own for work, and it says, Hi, I'm John Steinklobber, and I do this. And it's terrible. <laughs> but this is really good. I, uh, I had a question. That's true. Yeah. Most of, so the part about you being a writer for like the Colbert Report and stuff like that is true? No, oh gosh, no! Is, does it say that I was a writer? I mean, I, I, I was not a writer on Colbert. I, I mean, I, I don't think it says that. Maybe it does, but um, like I've been on the news live where they've said Colbert writer Mark Malkoff, and I have to correct them live and be like, I was never a stinking writer on that show. <laughs> uh, but uh, journalists, if they go to Wikipedia, they just assume it's all true. You know, I want to put like, um, oh, yeah? that like I was raised by wolves and like, um, <laughs> you I don't should know. do it. I used to be married to Bob Dylan in the 60s. Just weird stuff. And like, <laughs> have people mention it as fact. If it's on the internet, it's true automatically. Like, just since you said it and this goes live, I won't believe it now. But once we put it up on the internet, I'll believe it. Bob Dylan, <laughs> I mean, come on. Well, your IMDB page mentions you that you did something on the Colbert Report, too. The <laughs> Colbert Christmas. <laughs> I, I did very. I did not do anything creative other than I did talk to the audience before the show and got them pumped up. Ah, uh, ah. But it was, it was great to be there for almost four years. I'm still friends with a lot of people over there. It was an amazing experience. Originally, we were only supposed to do something like 30 or 40 shows, and right away Comedy Central was smart enough uh, to uh, know that the biggest show that they had on other than The Daily Show was Mind of Mencia. So they're like, we should give this show a chance. And... Uh, <laughs> Colbert is like, I've been around a lot of famous comedians, and he's one or two of the, I would say, the funniest human beings I've ever met on the planet. I can see that, yeah. So if you he's went up to him and said, be funny now, he would be able to pull it off? Cause that's, he would. That's how, us, he, that's how us lay people judge comedians, so. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently so. Um, yeah, he's, uh, he was amazing. It was a good experience being over there. I was pretty excited to leave to do my own thing, but, uh, mm-hmm. yeah, good times. 
John, you had a question? Everyone says I look sorry, everyone says I look like him, by the way. I go to parties and people will be like, Are you Stephen Colbert's younger brother? People are joking and they've no idea I worked for the guy. Every <laughs> single day when I worked on that show, awesome. audience members would ask if I was related. <laughs> Oh, you totally need to play that up. Get yourself some some specs. Oh, wait, you do have some glasses. Sorry. Just, uh, just be I Colbert's mean mini me. <laughs> yes. I think I should. I'm just glad I don't. I look like Colbert and not Louis Anderson because that would be like really sad. <laughs> like, would be. Hey guys. You know who you look like. Gosh. <laughs> that cartoon he did was absolutely depressing because of his voice. But anyway, <laughs> go ahead. Off topic. John, you had a question. Well, I was curious as a writer, uh, and I was actually talking to my buddy Sam tonight about this. Um, as a writer, because you know comedians, they they always get all the credit for writing the material or whatever they deliver. What what is it that you that a writer for a comedy show does? Yeah, since you well, wrote for no. Colbert and all. Yeah, <laughs> oh, <laughs> and yeah. if you don't know, just make it <laughs> up. Yeah, for well, for, for writers for TV, what they normally do is. They, they, they'll write up a draft, it'll go to the head writer, and then they'll give it to the host, and usually the host and the head writer rewrite the thing. So conceivably, like, I've worked on all different types of shows. Like, sometimes you'll be watching TV, a comedy show, and it'll, it'll say, like, this episode written by blank, and literally not one of their jokes makes it on the final huh. final airing. So it's, not, it's bizarre. Wow. Um, Conan, Conan and Saturday Night Live are two shows where the writers have the most ownership of, of anything. Hmm. Um, but, but seriously, it's, it's crazy when you write something up and you hand it in and then it gets on TV. And if you get sometimes like, you know, 20, 30, 40 percent, that's good. It, it stays. Hmm. That's good. Well, you, know you know, I'm the. Oh, I'm sorry. No, a lot of times like it'll get rewritten around a table. To, so it's collaborative process. But that's it. Keep talking. I'm sorry. Oh well, I'm the, I'm just saying I'm the kind of guy that uh, I don't care if any of my stuff makes it. If if my name makes it in the credits, I'm happy. Yeah, <laughs> I didn't do nothing, but my name's in the credits. So that, hey. that, and that's cool till they turn the electricity off, and then you start wanting a little more. But you oh. know, uh, hey, <laughs> what would you say, uh, Mark, is your best um, project you've done to date? What's what's been the most favorite or the most crazy or however you would judge it? What do you what do you think? It's the best project you've done. Uh, Dang, um, I don't know. I really liked getting one of the video where I was carried across New York City because it's so bizarre and weird um, and surreal being carried by 16 musical theater students while they sing Lady Gaga like four or five <laughs> blocks. Um, that was odd. Um, and then I asked one guy, I was like, have you ever done this before, carried in somebody you didn't know in New York? And he said, yes, one time. <laughs> so, what? <laughs> I know, but it was like 11 degrees out. I picked the cra- the, the oh. coldest day of the year, so it was like, it was rough, but it's one of those things I can kind of work through the pain, and then once it's edited, I can kind of enjoy it. Like, my last video that I did um, was me setting out to get six-pack abs in less than a yes, month, seeing yes. what if I could do it. And that was, that was painful. It was a month of just pure pain and just me going crazy, but once it's over with, I can kind of be like, oh, it's, you know, I... I can kind of enjoy it, but it's like a lot of my videos are just working through the pain. Yeah, we, we talked about your little six-pack ab uh, stunt on, on one of our shows, and uh, I mentioned how that would have to be done by somebody that already had close to a flat stomach because somebody like me, it would take me six months just to get to zero, and then <laughs> and then you'd have to deflate me just a little bit more to do the, the abs thing because I've got like the opposite of six. I, uh, w- w- you know, the joke, uh, I have a keg. Instead of a, a six pack, but uh, yeah, so d- you could do it. I, I had to lo- I had to lose sixteen point eight pounds, and I had to work out two to three times a day, and mm-hmm. I could only eat fruit and carbs every seven days. Mm-hmm. It was just right. a lot. It was very extreme. Well, I would have to um, lose a Mark Malkoff to get there, so you know, n- <laughs> <laughs> and I would have to wait two pounds to get that much. So <laughs> that'd be two pounds. Uh, um, my my favorite one, if I can throw this in real quick. No, it has got to be living in IKEA. I'm gonna do it. <laughs> living in oh, IKEA. That's that so nice. it's like every I don't know. Every time I go in IKEA, I think I want to sleep right there, mm. and I want yeah. to eat breakfast there. And you pretty much have yeah. like free reign of the store, right? I was rollerblading at three in the morning with security guards. I was doing the closing <laughs> announcements <laughs> where I was taking awesome. people out and singing singing Bon Jovi covers into the into the PA <laughs> system. Uh, it was insane. <laughs> 
Exactly. It was one. It's one of those things where my whole career has been based on my, the passion that I have for comedy and persistence, and just asking for crazy stuff. And sometimes people say yes. You never know. I asked IKEA, "Will you let me do this?" It took two months, and then they finally said yes. And it was uh, it was it was a media circus. I would wake up from a nap. And like thirty people would just be watching me sleep, like I was an animal in a zoo. Really, really. Uh, oh, well, I, was, I I imagine sleeping on a plane would be about that. Uh, see, I'd be afraid I'd be in one of them dang carts, you know, being checked out, flat packed, and shipped out somebody's <laughs> somebody's oh, minivan. God. You know, when they start trying to put those wooden dowels in me, that's when I. Like, hey, hey, there's, Wake only up. A, there's only a certain amount of holes, and uh, none of them are supposed to take one of those. So, <laughs> you know, the hardest well, thing about living on an airplane two things about living on an airplane that are hard. One, I couldn't shower, I had to clean myself with baby wipes every morning and wash my hair over the toilet, just pouring water on my, to- on my head. And the second thing is, is the sleeping situation. I would sleep like two to three hours a night while the cleaning crew vacuumed all around me. Oh, and um, mm. the mechanic. The mechanics, believe it or not, are the ones that, that, that had all the advice for me on like the best places to sleep. And I'm like, what are these mechanics doing that they, that they know <laughs> everything? Like, they would tell me what you do is you, you put up the armrest, so you have three seats to lay across to sleep, and then you stack cushions in the aisle. So I would have essentially four seats to lay across, and I'd be alone on the plane at night sleeping. So, I mean, I would do this, but the mechanics of, of all people hmm. are the ones that, that know oh, this. That, that makes sense. They're just chilling. It's those union jobs. <laughs> uh, hey, what what got you interested in comedy and doing your particular brand of it in the first place? Honestly, I mean, I've always been into comedy since I was like a little kid doing shows and stuff and always obsessed with comedy. And then, um, you know, I was pen pals with some of the Saturday Night Live people when mm. I was a kid. And just that whole cool. connection just got me more and more into it. And then... I, you know, I, I did stand up and sketch for a long time, and then I, I finally just like wanted to go solo. And the first video, the first real video I did, just was like kind of a hit, and it just kind of like really showed me that this is the way I should go. I uh, this was back 2003. I had auditions for the first ever Guns N' Roses Kids tribute band, and <laughs> 200 kids showed up, five and six year olds dressed like Axel and <laughs> Axel and Slash. No and, um, way. We we went to a hotel room on 42nd Street, and I wanted to teach the kids how to trash a hotel room. So, I mean, they they annihilated the place. We had a, a funnel with we had a, we had my a kids do with, that. Yeah. Mm. Oh, it was oh yeah. So much fun. We played at CBGBs. We would play all over New York. Um, the videos were so much fun, and uh, like we had little Axel, little Slash, little Duff McKagan. We did um some press with the real Slash. It was. So that was my first taste, and it was just, uh, it was kind of like uh, a big thing at the time. So I just really just like doing these weird, over the top conceptual pieces, you know? Absolutely. That is cool. So uh, you kind of. Little flashes. What? (laughs) Oh, sorry. I (laughs) I want to hear what Little Little Slash Slash. did. (laughs) Yeah, he's he's in jail now. Aww. I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. Dang. Uh, <laughs> I'm gullible. Uh, you kind of alluded to this earlier um, about you, you just see things, you 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 perceive you perceive them, and then you you persist and achieve them. Uh, I've just summarized your whole life in three words: persist, uh, perceive, and achieve. Uh, but where where does your creativity come from? What what gets you thinking about new stuff? What is your inspiration? Yes. Um, I, I can't sleep at night. My mind is always racing. I'll mm. write like 40 or 50 ideas down on the on paper and just wait a day or two, and I just pick like what excites me the most, what I think will be uh, funny, challenging, and just um, just I get obsessed with things. Like, I w- thank goodness no one can get in my head and know what I think about all day. But it's <laughs> like I'm I, I'm working on this one project in New York, and if it happens, it will be one of the biggest things in the world at that day but it's just a matter of me coming up with the idea and then just like emailing just emailing and being persistent to try to pull this stuff off but like it's it's really really hard with a lot of the stuff i mm. do and there's really not many people that do what i do so i can't really like you know like it, like i don't know get a lot of advice right. on certain aspects it's just me kind of like doing it and then 
Christine putting up with me. I mean, it's just, it's, <laughs> uh, it's, it's constantly me doing damage control with my wife because these projects wow. affect her more than you guys. Like on the airplane, she would have to travel. She would have to fly on the weekends to see me. And then I, we had our anniversary dinner on the wing of an airplane. I saw those and pictures, that, yeah. That was real. The, the caterer actually had to climb up all the stairs to the wing to serve us, and he almost uh, fell off and died, oh. uh, which Ooh. would have been bad for our anniversary. But, um, yeah, she's a tolerant woman. It, but was it annoying having William Shatner yelling through the window, there's something on the plane! <laughs> <laughs> Just go away, Will. You want to know? You want to know? I did 135 flights um, in one month to oh. set that Guinness World Record, and I did. There was one famous person I did a thing with, which was Danica Patrick. We raced um, toy uh, cars on the tarmac yes. in Richmond, Virginia, and uh, she crushed me. I honestly think that she's so competitive that she had her goons take the batteries out of my car because they wouldn't work. Oh my god! And uh, she, she like really was taunting me. She really was like, <laughs> you know, mouth off. You, yeah, you're nothing compared to me. And I said, Danica, you think that? You go do your thing. You know. I, I liked it. Toy. I liked it when you proved that a uh, the, the suction power of a toilet on an airplane will, in fact, eat up an entire roll of toilet paper. That oh my awesome. gosh, that was crazy. I have, all these, I have all these parents email me that their children try it at home and are disappointed that it doesn't work yeah. at home. Um, You're gonna get four sheets for max. The, uh, for any of the listeners, this is what you do, and I'm sure the TSA would love for you to do this. Uh, <laughs> you take a roll of toilet paper. <laughs> you take a roll of toilet paper on an airplane, you put one end in the toilet, and then you unravel the whole thing 100 feet back down the aisle, press flush, and the whole thing gets sucked in in four seconds. Awesome. That is, that is I want to try that next time I fly, but I'm sure I'll not be allowed. No, I just imagine this. this uh... It's not enough to see it. Because you, it is on your all, on all your video stream stuff. You, yeah, I just imagine the steward is hanging on to the end of it, you know, as it's as it's being sucked down the. the <laughs> You're not supposed to do this. Seatbelt sign is on. <laughs> anyway, uh, so um, uh, what 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 uh, what is the what advice would you give to someone? who's talented or creative or, or who can't sleep at night. I can relate to that part of it that you get, you lay down and something about the blood rush in your head. You can't sleep for all the stinking ideas. Uh, but who, what, what advice would you give someone who has these yearnings or whatever, but, uh, they have a nine to five, um, that, you know, but they want to do more. What, 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 uh, sure. push them, push them, give them a kick in the pants. What, what would you have to say to them? You are lazy. You are weak. No, no, that's not true. Um, I that's a, me. I, had I a like day cats. Job. I had a day job. I had a day job in television for like almost nine or ten years while a full time job while I was doing my comedy. I mean, it was just, you know, you if you love something enough, you'll just, you know, you'll be dedicated and make it happen. But I just was. It was essentially having two jobs plus, you know, I was married. It was um. It, it, uh, I just loved it so much, and I think if you have that burning passion and stuff, you, you just you just do it. I mean, I was, I, I was uh, just really just uh, like I just it was just in me that I needed to to, uh, to make these videos happen. And like, I, you know, we all know people, so it's just a matter of just looking at your resources and who you know, and just just getting like a, a small team together and just people that have a similar vision and just doing it. You know. Um, and I really do think that good stuff gets noticed. I mean, I, I really do. I think mm -hmm. that if, if anybody's consistent at all with throwing up good stuff, that um, it gets attention. I, I really do think that it sometimes takes certain people quite a while. Like, Louis Black, to me, is one of the funniest human beings on Earth. And he didn't get famous until he was, like, 50. I mean, mm -hmm. he, 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 he fell on his face for, like, a decade or two doing stand-up um, and just didn't it just took him a little bit longer, but um, I think in the end that the talent does kind of, uh, you know, gets noticed. That's huge. It's huge. Mm. Um, John, do you have any questions? I do. Um, you know, a lot of your stuff being video stuff, uh, it, it takes a creative person behind the camera also to, to help that. Do you have a team that you work with exclusively to, to, to capture all that stuff, or, or is it, you know, just... Random folks I, who I work with a lot of the same people. Um, these, I usually the people I know like they're staying probably me out a lot lately. Like, did you see that one scene in the abs video where I'm bathing in junk food? It's like a dream sequence. <laughs> that that was yes. like first of all crazy. That was 
it was really hard to film because I couldn't eat any good food for a whole month. Christine's been <laughs> doing a lot of stuff, which is great. And then um, I have these guys, that uh, Nick Pruer and Joe Pickett from the Fa- Found Footage Festival, um, who their, their stuff is amazing. They tour around the country doing this show where they just find weird videotape at it, Salvation Armies and in the gar- garbage and stuff. So I work with those guys a lot. But I, I do think that to get a team, if you put that team together, you can get so much more done. Mm-hmm. You, you get them That's off Twitter cool. or, or Facebook? or I, There's usually just people I know. Like Joe and I, Nick and I worked together at Letterman when we were 22. Um, Joe I met through Nick. Um, it's just like I work with people that, at Colbert that I became friends with. So normally people just hire who they know. Like I'm, I'm up for working with whoever's talented and whoever um, – you know, uh, is fun to work with, but I mean, I think in the end, people just want to work with their friends, mm-hmm. except for you guys. You guys yeah. love each other, right? Oh man, desperately, Pretty much. desperately in loathe with him. That's absolutely. I'm going right. to kill you when you sleep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was just kidding. My wife just looked at me funny, <laughs> which right. is kind of normal, but. Well, I, I got into the uh, video, the cat video, like before the show, and I was really crying along with the lady. <laughs> and my wife, I look over and she's looking at me like seriously concerned. And I'm like, I, I, I should probably create some sort of thing that just happened so that I won't be in trouble and she'll be concerned about me. But I, I just broke and let her know that I'm just an idiot. She knew that and she let me off <laughs> for, for bad behavior. She slapped you. So what does the future hold for Mark Malkoff? I mean, whatever you can tell us. I know there's secrets upon secrets upon secrets in your world. Oh, I'll tell God. you the other stuff that he won't talk about. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I'm working on a video now that's kind of come out, I believe, on the 25th of July that has to do with uh, something I've been obsessed with for a long time. Uh, and uh, I can't talk about it too much, but I think it's going to blow your mind. Um, I'll tell you about a video I wanted to do recently that Christine wouldn't let me do. I wanted to ship myself overseas legally. And, uh, oh. she's, a, she's a very wise woman. Um, I just thought it would be interesting to put myself like with like you know like uh, like a uh, like a PlayStation or something. Infrared and, like, um, camera. Exactly, and shit myself legally, and she's like, you're not doing that, and I was upset. I was seriously, I'm such an idiot that I was upset with my wife for like two or three days until I realized she was so right. That like, I mean, the end of the video would have been my death. So yeah. I mean, I was like, yeah, you're right. I should not do oh, this. Oh man. Oh my gosh. Yeah, you you get out of the box finally after about a month, and you're in that that warehouse at the end of Indiana Jones. You're like, oh crap. <laughs> a, and they find yeah, the videotapes years later. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I am considering doing a, a, a second version of uh, this video I did. Uh, called Ferris Wheel, where I wanted to see if I could get somebody famous on the stages of Broadway, perform a Broadway famous Broadway person to ride the Ferris Wheel with me at Toys R Us Times Square. It's this giant four-story Ferris Wheel. And I did it like seven years ago, and I got to talk to, like, try to get Antonio Banderas, Al Pacino, and all these guys to ride the Ferris Wheel with oh, me. Wait. And it was really funny, because they all considered it. And finally, after like a month of people saying no to me, I I I, and I got Marklin Baker from Perfect Strangers to do it. Uh, <laughs> yes, and we've been friends ever since. He's in all my videos, and people are like, "How do you know him?" I'm like, in, "I asked yeah. him to ride a Ferris wheel." <laughs> That's awesome. That is so cool. <laughs> you know, I had an idea for you. Um, uh, James okay. came up for a big uh, a big Dragon Con event. It's a big. Uh, it's 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 everything kind of convention comics, sci-fi, fantasy, all that, and it comes to Atlanta once a year, and uh, it's like the Mardi Gras up. of cosplay too, as well. So yeah, it's like a geek convention. I mean, it's it it is a geek convention. It's awesome, but everybody dresses up. You know, everybody's got these crazy costumes that they've made of their favorite character or whatever. And I thought, and I think James, we even talked about this. Mm-hmm. Mark Malkoff needs to come down here and have a challenge with somebody where he comes into one of these hotels, dress like a normal dude, and see how many people he can get to give them a piece of their costume, and he can walk out of the thing dressed as somebody totally different. So put that on your books, and <laughs> that's totally up your alley. <laughs> that's actually that's actually really funny. Normally, the ideas people give me suck, um, but I like that. I actually. <laughs> um, I actually do love it. Somebody, I actually might be doing a video um, at the end of next month that somebody gave me an idea that was actually good. But normally, ideas suck. Um, but that would be so much fun. So you guys Thanks. go to these conventions? Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. Well, you can go around even to the vendors and get a, like a leather leather chaps, and then you go get a lightsaber, and then steal somebody's wow. headgear. You could go steal Lou Ferrigno's polo shirt, and because um, <laughs> yes. he was there. <laughs> and you don't even have to pay to get into that park. Yeah. Most of it, you know, you just walk in off really? the street. And all, there's like three hotels. and You could probably collect you several go. garter belts as well, but they're all from, <laughs> from pretty large women. So just oh, stop be it. aware they may be belt-sized for you, Mark. <laughs> Everybody. I, I appreciate oh, wow. large women. I really do. I appreciate it more when they, when <laughs> they don't try to dress like they're, you know, three inches around in the waist. But uh, – Anyway, large women. Wow. There was a woman. There was a woman on the subway today that was right in front of me, and I, I couldn't tell if she was obese or pregnant. Like, like, because Christine was next to me, and afterwards she's like, "Was she pregnant?" I'm like, "I couldn't tell. We couldn't tell if she was." And we didn't want to insult her because sometimes women, like, yeah. you'll be like, "Do you want to sit down?" Like, they get insulted, like yeah. if they're not, like, like they think you're pregnant and stuff. So. I just I, she could have been pregnant. Um, what do what would you have guys done? What do I do? Well, you don't ever ask that ever, ever. And but if you do, always no matter what they well if they say no, I'm not. Rather than feel awkward, you just put your hands to your forehead and say you will be soon, and then just drift oh. away. <laughs> <laughs> and that way, it's an easy I way want- out, and they feel like yeah. they've been touched by something mystical. <laughs> yeah, hopefully they won't press charges. I wanted to offer the seat on where I was sitting, but I was afraid she'd get offended. But I'll try that the next time. But if she, if I get arrested, I'm going to blame you. Yeah. Okay. Well, you could ask for part of her outfit. You know, can I have your shoes? You know? <laughs> oh, your feet are so swollen; they may fit me. You know that kind of thing. It 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 just it always helps to be kind to pregnant women, or uh, or anybody. Just be kind. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He, that's that's a. Our top advice at NLCast is don't punch pregnant women anywhere. (laughs) And don't ask to touch their belly. Good God, strangers asking to touch a pregnant woman's (laughs) belly. It's still – it's it's a mediocre a woman's stomach is not a private part but it's close on the ra- on the scale it's closer to the private part wing of things and just because there's a living <laughs> human inside doesn't mean it's not anymore but doesn't want to kick you yeah. ugh kind of well, odd unless it has a there's a t-shirt that says rub this for luck then leave it alone so Anyway, hey, uh, I'm gonna hit you with wow. a couple more. What what would what's Mal, uh, Mark Malkoff's favorite movie of all time? Oh, uh, dear goodness, mm-hmm. too hard, so hard. Um, oh, just start naming them off. Maybe it's like asking okay, what your favorite um, ice cream is. I like I like um, it's a wonderful life. I like Harvey. I like Jimmy Stewart a lot. I like mm-hmm. um, I oh, like yes. um, Rushmore. I like Harold and Maude. I like Mary Poppins a lot. Um, yes. I like Won- the 1971 Wonka uh, movie. High um, School Musical. Uh, <laughs> Dang it! Yeah, <laughs> you see the Zac Efron poster in my wall. Uh huh. It's really cute. Um, I like I like a lot of those. I was raised on Mel Brooks movies when I was a little kid, so like Mel Brooks, anything like comedy Whoa. stuff. I was Woody Allen. I loved I loved the early Woody Allen stuff. Mm-hmm. Are you a reader? Oh jeez, you read books and stuff. I. Do I don't have as much time as I would right. like, but yeah, I you mean, read, I am. Uh, read anything good I, lately? I, I, dear goodness, um, let me see what I read. Um, uh, dear goodness, I don't remember what I was reading. I was reading a book actually called Mind Change because mm-hmm. uh, I had a lot of negative thoughts. It's kind of like a religious book, but that was the last one that I read by Thomas A. Jones. Mm-hmm. Um, and then uh, Christina actually made um, asked me to read Harry Potter, but I haven't read it yet. Should I read Harry Potter? Yes. Yes. Who is that? It's the most creative thing put out in the last 100 years. It's awesome. So it's Wait, good he's really? that devil boy, isn't he? Whatever. He's the boy with Whatever. casting spells. Whatever. He's going to steal your soul. It's good. It's good I stuff. I promise. <laughs> um, Christine had me had me read uh, the Twilight books, and I kind of wanted to jump off a cliff. Oh yes, please Whoa. do, and then read Harry Potter because, yeah, you. I read the first read Twilight books, book. You have to punch somebody. I read the first one, man. and I couldn't. I couldn't go through the rest. Uh, you know, 
it wasn't. I looked at the cover and put it down. No, it wasn't even the vampires deal. You know, like she had no clue what vampires were really supposed to be. It wasn't all that that offended me. It was the emotions of this chick. I mean, it's like, oh, the feelings rushed <laughs> in the icy cold, and oh, I tripped and fell because I'm clumsy and I'm emo, and my dad, and I want to go back to Florida, and this and that, and oh, I tripped and <laughs> fell again, and oh, I'm gonna cut myself open in front of twenty vampires at the end of the book. Ah! You know, I just, just <laughs> you know, you know. You know. <laughs> You know what was actually really fun when I was living on the airplane? So many teenage uh, girls were reading Twilight, and I would go down the aisle, and I would, give, I would ruin the ending for them with a fake <laughs> ending. Oh, no! really, I would say, at the end, yes. you know, at the end, at the end, Charlie turns into a vampire, and they would look at me, and they couldn't tell if I was serious or not, and, like, some of them looked like they were going to cry, and it's not the ending, but... I, I, that actually was one of my favorite parts. Well, to this day, you oh, can oh, still oh. pick a fight. High five. To this day, you can still pick a fight with uh, now 16-year-old kids and up um, since it's been a few years and just by starting the conversation, Team Jacob or Team uh, Edward, and, and just op- automatically take the opposite <laughs> side and argue it. And, man, you'll get people riled up more than Mac versus PC. It's crazy. Oh, <laughs> You're probably right on that. And one. I've never read them, and they'll be arguing these crazy points. Well, Jacob was just in it for the pride. He never loved her, and I'm like, yes, he did. <laughs> I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> you know, he took his shirt off three he times as much. If that doesn't prove love. Oh, I don't know what does. Um, uh, what Mark Malkoff? <laughs> do you have uh, in my family? We, we're not, I'm not a I'm not a person that uses uh, swear words. <laughs> But I am very creative in creating my own equivalents, uh, you know, and, and so I always like I, – I have a theory that everybody has words that grandma used or, or mom and dad used and maybe you even create your own. What is your favorite non-swear word when, when Mark Malkoff does something in front of a group of children that hurts? What, what would he utter? Oh, dear goodness. I don't know. Dude, like, goodness. There it Sunday is. School. I, I teach Sunday school, so I don't oh. – I don't, no, like, um, I have to be careful with the kids. Today, when I was filming with some people, I said the word mothers. I just said mothers. That's not a swear word, just mothers. Yeah. yeah. Um, no, it could be. I don't think so. It's only a swear word if you, mother, if, if you say mother, father. That's what my brother well, used to say all then, the time. Then, then you're done with. Yeah, um, that's it. I think that that's it. Like, my my dad would say like you know like sometimes he would say sugar which I just think is one of the lamest like non swear words ever like but I would you put rather honey iced tea with it uh, yeah that's sugar honey iced yeah. tea that was the uh, way I learned it when I was young. oh really okay okay, okay. yeah I'll it's ask, an, I'll ask an, you later John what yours were when we hit stop but <laughs> <laughs> no we can keep it clear. <laughs> no. sugar. Oh okay. dear goodness! I think that was uh, Mark Malf- yeah. Malkoff's official oh, answer. Oh dear goodness! Yeah, that you don't even realize it, but that's it. That's it for you. <laughs> uh, let's see how how would people connect to you on the Twitters and the Facebooks and the MySpace and the YouTubes and all that good stuff. Oh sure, um, oh, yeah. Dude, my website's markmalkoff.com. I do videos for for my damn channel. Mm-hmm. So if you go to <laughs> mydamnchannel.com, dot com, you can look at a lot of my videos. Um, my Twitter is M Malkoff. That's M M A L K O F F. And anyone um, that that uh, requests to be uh, my friend on Facebook, I will say yes, unless you are Casey Anthony. Mm. <gasps> and you know what's cool is he'll say yes, and sometimes you ask him something, and he'll he'll react to you or wow. interact. But yeah, yeah, I'm I'm an idiot. I Did you ever try. see Terminator? <laughs> No, I'm saying like of all the of all the people that I follow, yeah. Because I discovered you back when you were flying on the airplane, mm-hmm. and um, there was like a a billboard of Mark Malkoff, and I was like, hey, I follow that guy on Twitter, and so I said, hey, I found this picture of you, and I took a picture of it in uh, in Atlanta. Oh yeah, you were and, so nice. Oh, and he, and and you said that back. I was like, oh, he said something back to me. He said oh. something. So I, you know, I printed it out and you know pasted it around the office and stuff, and nobody cared about me anymore, but. Well, no, I'm, just, I'm just kidding. I wasn't that bad. Mark, it's been an honor uh, oh, to no. have you. We appreciate you, and and I'm not I'm not closing the show. I, I will be soon, but uh, I want to. I'd be amiss if I did not mention your awesome uh, uh, ex girlfriend, your wife there, uh, Christine Peel <laughs> Malkoff. She, I think, we connected with her through Twitter way before yeah. we had we had found that she had this this man out there doing awesome stuff. So hats off to Pink Acres podcast and christine peel 
and uh, and the Andre the Giant comments can can rot in Hades <laughs> for all I care. I agree. So John and I have a um, what do you call it? A profile pic crush, if that's even legal on the internet, because uh, she's very photogenic. <laughs> so you're a lucky man. I'll just say it that. Seems pretty. No, I appreciate it. That's, that's well, true. he's a, he's a good looking guy too. I I, I'm, I know. I hate his good. smile because it's like oh. <laughs> it's perfect. I know him and his nice straight teeth, Dad Gummit. and his full head of hair, I'm and his so and his Webby Award hosting skills. Uh, yes, he gets to meet people <sighs> and share a bed with them. I mean, that was kind of out of context. <laughs> anyway, share. You have to watch it. <laughs> yes, you do. Share fair. Hey, uh, let's read a couple of voicemails, and or uh, f- yeah, let's read voicemails. That's that's an awesome thing to do. Here, here's some stories real quick, and and Mark, you feel free to laugh along. Uh, I went on vacation sure. with my mom to visit my niece. We rented a two story hotel room, and my mom took the upstairs room because she smokes. <laughs> okay, uh, well, it was the first. That thing. was it. Yeah, that no, no, <laughs> no. That's not okay. the story. I just Why'd think you it's. Read that? I just think it, it's it's what was in there. <laughs> well, the first thing in the morning, my mom was up, and we were sleeping, and we heard a long repeated fart. <laughs> it, this was this was for you, John. She actually said it in the subject line. It it reverberated off the wall, and then there was this giggling, and my mom shouted, "It was just my alarm going off." Yeah, <laughs> that's my excuse too. <laughs> I shouldn't laugh at those. I'm not in middle school uh, anymore. Tammy so says, funny. "Needless to say, we Sorry. were we were uh, all awake and waiting for mom's alarm smell to go away." So. <laughs> Uh, now we know the reason why they put her upstairs. She's like Quasimodo. <laughs> it's uh. my alarm clock. <laughs> oh, stop. Uh, well, uh, this one comes too. to us from Ryan. He, he wrote a real version and a middle school version, which I'm always a fan of. Well, we, we uh, stopped at a campground in northern Idaho after a long day of driving. We set up our pop-up camper and went to bed. As you may know, pop-up trailers have those pull-out beds with the tarp-like material on the top. Well, that night we were so tired, we didn't secure the bottom of the tarp to the plastic hooks underneath the baseboard, making it easy for things to slide out. So my brother, who was about five at the time, sleeping in the end with me, it was about 3 a.m., he moves in his sleep closer toward the end point, and he fell right out. (laughs) He woke up instantly on the ground, stood up, brushed himself off, and then had to knock on the door (laughs) to have his parents let him back in. Uh, he had, dad answers the door and sees this five-year-old kid. I fell out, dad. <laughs> so love oh, that. Here's for being lazy, dad. The middle school version. Hey, James and fart bat guy. I hope oh, they have geez. a story for you. So here it is. We were going on road trip, hopefully to Oregon. <laughs> and then there was seven and we was going up for something. I can't remember because it was a long time ago and I can't remember. Anyways, my brother fell out of the trailer and re- Turned into a bat. Lols. So there you go. <laughs> I love middle school. Oh, man. All right. We got two more. Laurel says, uh, I walked in the bathroom at my work, and I was followed by a small Asian woman. Racist. And uh, I, when I walked in, she <laughs> said, which office do you work in? And I said, the counselor's office in Building D. And she said, you counsel what? And I said, people who work here are psychologists. She says, oh, but she still seemed confused. I walked in the stall and assumed the conversation would end because I obviously needed to go to the restroom. Once I got in the stall and got settled, she jumps into the stall next to mine and says, so would you be interested in a retirement plan? (laughs) We could build one for you. I'm over at W Financial just a few doors down. This was definitely one of the oddest things that's ever happened to me in a restroom. Thank you. You know, uh, it's the economy, folks. You got to blame the economy. Mm. You know, nothing. Get them when they're sitting down. Nothing sacred anymore. <laughs> Ladies all talk to each other in the toilet anyway. Uh, <laughs> toilet. This is the best for last. Doctor Louis says, "I was at work the other day. I felt like I needed a snack, so I strolled over to the vending machines. After browsing the selection for a few moments, I spotted some Junior Mints, which is strange since I don't normally go for minty treats. I usually go for chocolatey, salty, or fruity treats." Okay, but something inside me craved them for some reason, so I take them back to my bed desk, start snacking. As I swallow one, I sneezed all of a sudden, and the junior mint went right up the back passage into my sinuses. Oh! <laughs> Those things are not small either. Oh! <laughs> That's terrible. Oh, that makes my nose hurt. It was just a little annoying at first, but then once the chocolate melted away, it began to burn. 
I ran to the restroom. I looked in the mirror. I looked like I was about to die. I tried coughing to dislodge the mint, but instead, instead I dislodged my Mexican food that I'd ah. eaten for lunch. <laughs> Oh, so to make matters worse, it didn't go down the drain. So I grabbed a plunger and I was able to get it oh. all down. Yummy. Just gets better. Uh, Meanwhile, the junior uh, mint was still crammed up there. Eventually, the burning sensation went away and I went back to my desk. Thought that'd be the end of it. But a week later, one of my coworkers was clearing the restroom and asked us all why there was lettuce and tomato in the sink drain. I just oh. pretended like I didn't know what was going on. That's odd. Lettuce and tomato in the sink, sink drain. I wonder how that happened. Hope you enjoyed my misery, John. Dan, that's gross. Ugh. Ugh. Oh, here's a, here's one from a kid. A I love the kid ones. Uh, dear John and Trevor James, I love the show. Finally decided to send something in. When I was about five, I was having some water and Oreos, and I saw there was part of an Oreo inside my water. My mom said not to drink it. I don't know why, but then I saw the Oreo swim in the water. Turns out it was <gasps> a big black beetle. Hope this makes it on mm. the show. John's very funny. John, you're the favorite. Did you notice? Nah. They just say that to get at you so that you'll make fun of me. <sighs> I don't know. Well, Mark, I thank you for joining us, bro. You're awesome. That was my pleasure. That was yeah. so much fun. Can I call you bro? I, I should have asked. You can call me bro. Okay. For sure. Next time I'll be funnier. <laughs> no, you're <laughs> perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I spent Never I spent know. some time up in New York recently on my way to Ireland and uh the uh the airport. I I I was in and out of uh JFK and uh it's oh, wow. it's amazing. I I got to see who was the lady that was on uh, season 8 of uh of 24 opposite Jack Bauer there. Um I saw you mean her. Garofalo? Yeah, I, uh, no. No, no, no. No. <laughs> The the redheaded lady <laughs> that was the FBI agent that went rogue and you know ended up. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't know her name, but you saw her. Yeah, she was in line at Starbucks, and I was like, "Hey, I think oh. I know her." So, did you oh, get her oh, autograph? Yeah. No way. I don't want to be one of those people. Uh, so yeah, we see kind of see people around. It's kind of fun sometimes. I saw. Yeah, you see people around it. You never know. It's New York, you know. Yeah. Kind of cool. Yeah. I, I went once with a work thing, and I kept hoping that I was going to round the corner and see somebody, and I didn't. I was really hoping to run into uh, Steve Martin because I hear he lives up there. Ah, uh, no, I was in yeah, L- he does. I was in L.A. and we didn't see anybody famous. Although I think the, we, I think the guy that played the- Soroman um, almost ran over me with his car on the lot, though. <laughs> <laughs> that guy, okay. Ian McKellen. No, no. Or the, Christopher Lee. The other guy. The bad the bad guy. Soromon. Oh, Christopher Lee. Yeah. I think he almost hit me with his car. Oh, Christopher Walken? No. Oh no, no Walken. not Chris Walken. He's a crazy guy. Um I think it's Christopher <laughs> Lee. Oh, Christopher Lee, yeah. He's like how old is he? He's like ninety something. Wow. Yeah, he, he probably almost, should he shouldn't have been driving. I think he almost hit me with his car, but I, I don't want to say that out loud and get him sued. But anyway, it's time for us to get out of here. Uh, Mark, again, thank you so much. Um, uh, that's the show for this week, everybody, from the chat room to real life. Check out the website, podcast.nlcast.com. Go check out everything Mark Malkoff's doing. Follow him on Twitter and Facebook. Just Google his butt, and you'll find it and all the other things he does. Email us here, though, with your comments, questions, feedback, james at nlcast.com. Call us with your stories and all that good stuff, 209-5-NLCAST. Follow us on Facebook or Twitter. It's always slash NLCAST. Join us for a live show every Monday night at 9.30 uh, Pacific or Eastern, 6.30 Pacific. And leave us an iTunes review if that's how you found us. Check out all the NLCast Network shows at NLCast.com. Thanks to our sponsors, Rob Gobers, for our theme music. Thanks to Mal- Mark Malkoff for joining us and his awesome wife for letting him. Thanks to our spouses for letting us record, our contributors, and everyone who listens. And make sure you check out jsteinklobber.com for the best voiceover work in the business mm-hmm. for, that you can afford anyway. And remember... Don't hack me. When you tell a funny life story, tell it like nobody's listening. Peace out, peeps. Bye. I don't want you calling those guys. <laughs> what you calling those guys? You better get home! Stop it. Alright. Boom.